Hi, John Marshall, the drill master. This is yet another video. This is Air Force colors differences. Uh, Air Force, <laughs> Air Force is a little strange. Uh, and I say that with all love to my, my service of, uh, of 20 years. All right, so let me move my cursor back over here. We're going to start with the University of Arkansas color guard. So here we have Colleges can can use uh, college ROTC units can use ceremonial technique, but they're not using ceremonial technique here. They're they're dressed in the the uh, uh, ceremonial belt and ceremonial cap, and uh, cadets. Um, can I make this? Yes, I can. Oh, it, it's kind of yeah, it's okay. All right. Um, the the keepers of the belt need to be an inch away from the buckle, uh, but. Uh, Air Force doesn't use this grip. We don't put the left hand on the uh, on the socket. That's that's only the Army that does that. So, and there's another cadet marching back here. Um, and if the other, if the cadet, and I, I get this from a historical pers perspective, uh, but the uh, the Army developed this this technique of having a. Uh, uh, the the sergeant major, I think it is, behind the the uh, the color guard, and that uh, that individual then gives the commands for the color guard. They report to the the officer of the mess and get all the the, the that formality taken care of, and then he has he or she has them post the colors, and and uh, but that's only for a a, a dining in. Uh, situation that has nothing to do with with colors uh, actually for any other service really um, but it doesn't have anything to do with colors outside of that that atmosphere so outside that setting so here we have you uh, going shoulder to shoulder and if you're shoulder to shoulder that's fine if you're going to use the ceremonial technique I'm I don't have a an issue with that except that um, I can tell you're not using ceremonial technique in that the left hand is on the socket. The elbow is, well, this elbow's flared. This elbow's kind of flared. And, you know, Air Force has that, uh, has the requirement of, yeah, my, my fist then is at, at uh, elbow or uh, my fist is at shoulder level. And then my, my forearm is horizontal. So, and I've got an issue with my, my shoulder. So this is uh, a little more comfortable for me, but, but honestly and i'll lift my body up like that so then my my elbow should be horizontal if i'm carrying that's a regulation drill uh, technique for the air force so um and the grips here the the you can see the grips uh the technique is shown in air force manual 36 2203 and there are also some issues that are are uh very obvious when you look at the uh, the afman um, and it's, it, it's happened since 2013 and it's crept in. So the 2018 edition here, now I'm, I'm making this video in 2020, but the 2018 edition has still some, some issues with it. And I've identified that written an article and I'll link to that below, but, uh, uh, the grips, anyway, I was saying the techniques, techniques are actually shown in the air force manual, uh, whether anybody else says it or not, it's, they're still shown. So we go off of pictures and text in regulations uh, if, if we didn't go off of pictures and I've, I've had I've had NCOs tell me that well it's it's a picture it's not in the text well then why are the pictures in there in the first place if we didn't go by pictures that are in the regulation then the pictures wouldn't be there so yes obviously text helps explain uh, something in a picture and I really wish there was more text in actually all three of the manuals, especially the TC and the Afman, uh, but it's it's still it's still there. And and uh, the Af Air Force manual does uh, have a fairly decent amount of, of information in there. Uh, and and I'll I'll get to to uh, techniques in just a minute for regulation drill. But we carry. Hold on, just a minute. We need lighting. How's that? All right, gee. So, uh, sorry about that. Having major computer problems earlier and didn't even think of the lighting. All right, so uh, our grip on the, the rifle butt is going to be, can you, what can, well, here, it's going to be like this. 
let me grab my rifle here. So you're you're on the the heel of the and I'll hold this up like this there and turn it. Oh, there we go. I tell you what, probably right shoulder is going to be better. All right, so we're going to have all of the fingers closed. We're still going to split the heel of the butt of the rifle with the index and the uh, ring finger there. We're, we split it, but we close that gap. And then just as the Marine Corps does, we're going to have the thumb inside the, the curve of the index finger. So this is Air Force technique. This is Marine Corps technique with that split still having the thumb in the curve. And then this is army technique to where you have the uh, the donut or whatever you want to call it the circle with the thumb <clears throat> so air force still follows afman techniques that are pictured but the <clears throat> but the guards are going to for regulation drill the guards are going to follow the marine corps order for the transitions to and from those uh those uh, um, positions. So the position of order to uh, the outboard or the outside shoulder, and then from the outside shoulder to present. You you follow the techniques that are illustrated in the the beginning of the colors section of uh, the uh, uh, I think it's section seven or maybe it's still seven thousand. I don't know. Anyway, it's the colors section of the Marine Corps order. At the very beginning there, it has the techniques and there's a pause technique that's used for the the rifle guards going from the outboard shoulder to present and also to order for the uh for order to uh to the outside shoulder it's the same count but coming down is the difference so that's why uh, the army is the only one and here we have right here uh university of arkansas ROTC. Now this could this picture could be years old. Uh, I'm just using it as an example. Uh, the Air Force does not march with both guards at right shoulder. None of the services do except the Army. The Army is the only one that uses both has both guards at right shoulder. So every other service, the the rifles are on the outside shoulder, or in the case of uh, Marine Corps, Navy, and Coast Guard, they say outboard shoulder. So then. Since the AF man pictures the guards at the outside shoulder, then what are we supposed to do? Well, at the beginning of the Air Force manual, it says, see the uh, uh, the training circular. And actually, it's still outdated uh, terminology there. It says, see the training circular, see the Marine Corps order. And it used to say uh, the Air Force Academy manual. So Air Force Academy manual is gone. And it also still says... Uh, the field manual and the nav mc so those are old publications that have been have been uh, uh out, that are outdated now and now it's the the training circular 3-21.5 and also uh the marine corps order 105 20 no that's the flag manual uh 5060.20 that's drill and ceremonies for the marine corps so when you're in a, plat a when you're in a flight situation and you have an armed flight going into regulation drill, you're going to use the techniques outlined in the training circular. When you get into the color situation, you don't use the training circular because the training circular has the both guards at right shoulder. So we go to the Marine Corps order because it has the guards at the outside shoulder, and then it's fully explained. So you, you have to have to understand the whole the 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 i would say partial logic behind this uh, it's not specifically spelled out and i really wish it was so uh it's just through years and years and years of of going over these manuals and and going over uh, uh certain situations like pictured here with the university of arkansas going over this with experienced instructors it's experienced ncos in uh, in the the drill world that that i've been able to to get a better picture of this all right so uh and here we have the slings mounted too high so right here on my uh actually yep this is a drill america a glendale drill america 1903 Either the M1 or the 1903 has this 
this swivel at the top here. This is called a stacking swivel. The stacking swivel has a little split in it because you insert the other stacking swivels into here in 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 uh, multiples of three. You have one stacking swivel inserted over here and one over here. And the stacking swivel is used for stack arms. And then the, the three then form a kind of, well, I can't do it with, with my fingers necessarily, but they form a, uh, a tripod. And the, the tripod then keeps, the tripod of the rifles, keeps the rifle out of the snow, out of the mud, out of the water. That's the whole reason that it was, it was created. Now, when you get to the M14, it doesn't have a stacking swivel because the, uh, the upper handguard is uh, is quite short so what do you do well you use the sling you actually feed the rifle in through the sling the upper part of the sling and uh, and still you can stack arms that way it takes a little bit longer maybe but you can still do it so the stacking swivel is the one that is incomplete it has that gap there the the upper and lower sling swivels then have a complete ring that's an oval but it's still uh, uh that ring there so uh, and it, it's a common mistake, especially when the, the slings were made extraordinarily long. I don't know why that happened. For many years, uh, rifles were shipped uh, from, from Daisy and also from Parade Store with, uh, with really long uh, slings. And, they were all, and some of them, uh, long ago, uh, some of them from, from Daisy were uh, a very, uh, it, it, like a nylon, and, and they would slip and... So web slings are the way to go. Uh, actually, web slings are the only slings authorized for the Army and the Air Force. It's the, the leather sling that I have right here. Uh, this leather sling that I'm going to attempt to mount on a rifle eventually uh, is only for the Marine Corps, Navy, and Coast Guard. All right, so um, marching shoulder to shoulder, right, both guards at right, at right shoulder shouldn't shouldn't be should be at the outside shoulder um not even the air force honor guard marches both guards at right shoulder so you're <clears throat> yeah the the team here is mixing uh, up a couple of techniques um using a, a bit of ceremonial technique marching shoulder to shoulder and then they're bringing in the the army training with the the left hand on the socket now when you have a wind a uh, serious wind condition. Now, for the Air Force regulation drill, and forgive my 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 arm is is not uh, uh, my my arm is not horizontal, uh, but just pretend it is. All right. So, um, you have that the the right hand at shoulder level, and then the horizontal forearm, and then if you have windy conditions, then you stick that left hand on the staff under and touching and you have this kind of look which i actually don't appreciate but that's not you know it that's neither here nor there what i appreciate or don't appreciate isn't necessarily uh, uh an uh, part of the issue but um but this is the the technique then and then for the other services this is the technique for regulation drill for high winds now the ceremonial technique for high winds, the first stage of ceremonial technique, and one day I'll, I'll get a video on that uh, and show you the three stages for the, the high winds. Um, this is the first stage of ceremonial technique when you're at carry uh, for, for high winds. We don't, for ceremonial guardsmen, we don't put, our, put both hands on the staff uh, anywhere. Uh, it's one, one hand only. All right, so uh, I'll stop picking on uh, on the University of Arkansas ROTC. Uh, both flags have fringe. Awesome. Both flags are the same size. Awesome. Now, size of the flags. Uh, actually, the the uh, let's see, it was uh, AFI thirty four twelve oh one is uh, is the protocol AFI, and it says that uh, uh, actually all the service flags, all, all the serve. Well, I should say. Uh, Army and Air Force, uh, the the smaller flag should be three by four. Uh, Marine Corps, Navy, and Coast Guard, you have the the larger flags and only the larger flags. Uh, you don't march for a color guard, at least you don't march the uh, the smaller flags. But Army and Air Force are authorized those three by four 
flags. Uh, and finding three by four flags is can be a little bit of a challenge. And usually it's it's three by five flags that you march on those eight foot staffs. So only eight foot staffs are authorized, and then only uh, and, and then the other foot uh, or the other uh, length of staff is nine foot. Now it used to be ten foot. Then the AFI was changed uh, several years ago, and now it's nine foot. And yet every other service marches nine and a half foot. So uh, it seems that that uh, the writers of this AFI have have not taken into account the other services. And so when we get together, we that's why we have that that different height staff effect, and it happens quite often. Uh, you can you can get into a search engine and look at that. Um, and it's unfortunate. All right, so here we have, uh, I think this is Prescott High School from, I don't know when, uh, but this is an Air Force Junior ROTC. And uh, the, the flared hands, I, I don't get the flared hands. I don't know where this comes from with the, the you can see the, the guards, well, they have the, the left hand there. What's with the flared hand? You, we don't flare hands anywhere on color guard never do we flare hands at all you grasp the staff so anyway uh let's let's get into this so gloves aren't tucked and uh i've 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 got information about tucking gloves on my instagram uh, we, the air force and the army are the only two services that can carry a state flag in a color guard, but it has to come after the departmental flag. So if you're not carrying the departmental flag, then you're going to carry the organizational flag. And in this case, this team must carry, since it's a J Rotsi team, it must carry the air force J Rotsi flag must carry it. You don't supplement the or, or switch out the, the J Rotsi flag or even the Air Force flag for the state flag. This is not an authorized color guard. You cannot carry that flag. It has to be either the Air Force or the AFJ ROTC flag. All right. Uh, and uh, let's see. Uh, uh, so I'm going off of the AFMAN. Uh, we have uh, the training circular techniques that are, are used for the staff. And then uh, the Marine Corps order techniques are used for, for the rifles. And then we have the AFI 34201 and then uh, uh, another uh, AFPAM, that's it, the Air Force pamphlet uh, 34202, which is the guide to protocol. Why the pamphlet and the AFI aren't, aren't merged, I don't know. But you know, we, have, we have those three governing, uh, governing regulations for for Air Force color guards. So the gold cord and tassels, it's not authorized to, to carry a staff like that. And looking at the staff, you have the gold cord and tassels. Most likely these flags sit in an office somewhere. And uh, these flags were, were given to the, the team and said, here, go present them. Uh, you don't do that. These staffs are not authorized. It's the light wood, uh, light ash wood guide on staff that's authorized. Uh, either one or two part. I don't recommend the, the single part because that's a um, uh, that's just a uh, an excuse for the wood to to warp. Honestly, it, it's probably not the the best purchase that you could make. So, no flared hands here, and definitely and both guards have their left hand a bit uh, too high there. It should be left hands. Left hands don't go under the. Uh, under the upper sling swivel they go when you're at, when you're holding the rifle at port you have the pinky at this upper receiver yeah you can see that there okay so you have the pinky at the upper receiver and when you're at present then the pinky should still be lifted over the mic should still be at that upper receiver the same same position or at least the same level if you were to draw a line around the uh, the hand guard there Flared hand here, completely unnecessary. And actually having the hand at the harness socket is not an Air Force technique. So drop the left hand away, flare that elbow out. That's a good job, but you need to have a grip on the staff. It's It, it doesn't make it ceremonial or 
regulationer, cooler, whatever. It, don't flare your hands. That's that's not the Air Force technique that we we use. So, interestingly, belts are 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 not part of anymore. That is, belts aren't part of the Air Force Color Guard, the regulation drill Air Force Color Guard. When we get into ceremonial drill, totally different. Um, there is an, a, a very high standard that must be met for ceremonial drill, but also a standard that must be met for regulation drill. So the fact that the, the guards have the, the belts on, that's fine. It's, a, it's actually a traditional thing that uh, the Air Force had. The, our, uh, our color guards, when the, when the f- for service first started and for many years after, uh, all the color guards were, were air police the air force version of the military police so the air police were armed with the uh the sidearm which is why they rendered the hand salute and you can still see if you go online actually you can go to my website uh go to the resources page look down and look at legacy manuals and you can you can download some old air force uh drill and ceremonies manuals and you'll see the uh uh the guards wearing the handgun executing the hand salute uh rifles came into um, more of a, um, I, I won't say fashion, but m- more of a, a, a staple as the, the, the rifle in, I believe it was the nineties, probably, yeah, around the nineties or so. Um, and which helped junior ROTC quite a bit actually, and civil air patrol for that matter. All right. So, uh, here we have, uh, I don't, I don't appreciate this grip on the staff, uh, having it at shoulder level because it's, it's too low and having the elbow flared out, uh, is also, it's just, if the wind kicks up and, and pulls the flag, you have a, a better, uh, uh you have a, the, uh, a better ability to control the staff than if your ha- hand is like this, it's, this is just a, a weaker position. And that's why, uh, for a ceremonial drill, we will actually crank our wrist like this. So instead of having, uh, there we go. Instead of having a, a neutral wrist, we'll actually crank that wrist around so that we have a nice hold on the staff. And this is what we, what what junior ROTC and Civil Air Patrol are supposed to have. There we go. See that nice uh, that nice flat wrist there. All right, so, uh, but, and they both have flat wrists, which is good. A neutral wrist is good. So uh, both flags have fringe. Again, that's good. Both flags look to be about the same size. Wrong staffs. Uh, You can't just walk into the office and pick the, you know, you have those flat gold stands. Everybody has those flat gold stands. Everybody has these these uh, two part wood guide on staffs, and they have the, the, the little spike at the top. Um, that uh, that's from the Civil War, and then the American flag almost always has the the spread eagle. The spread eagle's not authorized. That's only for the president. Um, it it's not a uh, a finial that that the Air Force authorizes for any other color guard, just the presidential color guard. All right, so here we have a base honor guard, um, and they too, unfortunately have the wrong staffs. And again, this is uh, a picture from, I don't know how long ago. So they could, uh, somebody could probably recognize these people and say, Oh, that's, you know, whatever base. And, and, uh, and that's fine. Uh, but it's from, you know, five years ago, we got new equipment. Great. That's awesome. However, you've got a picture here that shows the wrong staffs. And we also have, uh, 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 you've got a, a, a good wrist crank there, airman, but uh, your hand's a little bit too high and you're pulling the staff in quite a bit as well. So, And left hands here are for both the guards are too high. All right, and see how we have that fingers, the fingers wrapped just slightly through the, uh, the small of the stock. All right, uh, let's see, we'll go on here. Here's a picture of the Air Force Honor Guard presenting the American flag. The American flag only? Why, yes. This is authorized. This is perfectly acceptable. And see how the uh, the keepers here are just a, an inch away from the uh, the buckle. So uh, 
just the American flag is, is perfectly acceptable. This is the minimum color guard for any service, really. Um, but the, the, the standard color guard is the American flag and then the departmental flag. And if you have an organizational flag instead of like junior ROTC or uh, any Marine unit, uh, including young Marines, uh, Marine Corps JROTC, um, uh, Navy JROTC, and, uh, or the National Guard or the Reserve, then all of those flags are the, the second flag. And that is, for the Army and the Air Force, that is the standard of the, uh, of, or for all the services, that's the standard. And then, uh, uh, the minimum is here. What, what you see here, the three flat, the the three member, uh, three man team, for for just the American flag, perfectly acceptable. All right, another uh, Air Force Honor Guard picture, and you can see here that um, obviously they're using ceremonial technique. So, and I, as I've said in my other videos for the other services, uh, especially for the Marine Corps. Uh, so many people look at that and say, oh man, that's so cool. Yeah, it is cool. Uh, the The ceremonial technique for the Air Force Honor Guard is cool. It really looks great. And and it's 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 accomplished for a reason. There's, there's very specific reasons for everything that the ceremonial uh, drill world does. So <clears throat> uh, you've got to be careful. If you're going to go off pictures, which you shouldn't do, if you're just going off pictures, uh, and saying, "Oh, okay, that looks great. We'll we'll use that. Let's 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 figure out a way to get to this position." Uh, take for instance the uh, the guide on bearer here. That's not a technique that's used in regulation drill. So, guide on bearers out there uh, in junior ROTC or or anywhere else, you're not going to grasp grasp the staff. And this is this is at, right after the command of present. The staff is brought up and then slid back and and it, it's it's all a, 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 a ceremonial technique to to bring it out bring the the the, the staff to present um, there are, are special techniques that are used in in the ceremonial world that nobody else uses and you're not supposed to use them so when you look at these pictures you have to understand well this they're standing shoulder to shoulder but the Air Force manual says that you're supposed to form up at close interval. It's close interval. You form up at close interval because you're marching regulation drill. Air Force Honor Guard is going to form up. Uh, they're going to march. And sometimes they, they form up at close interval. It just depends uh, what they're going to do, what the next thing is they're, they're going to do. So... Um, uh, forming up at close interval is is the standard the for ceremonial drill we we march in shoulder to shoulder and then we split and go back to to uh, uh, close interval when we halt however there are certain occasions when we're not going to uh, when we're not going to to go back to the close interval and we'll stay shoulder to shoulder uh, when halted so you, you have to be careful, though, when you're looking at the pictures and make sure that you understand the context. All right. OK, let me get rid of that because that's here. There we go. Another uh, university's ROTC. And here we have flared hands. Why? Why are you doing this? It, it just doesn't it doesn't make sense. OK, uh, now. I've talked in another video about waist levels. Now you can see there's a there's a height difference, obviously, and then also a waist level difference here between the two color bearers. So what you have here, and cadets, you need to put the harness underneath the ceremonial belt. So what we have here is uh, the flags have to be carried at a different level it's mandatory in, in this case now this harness could be a little bit higher and this harness could be actually a little bit lower so that you the, the the american flag is supposed to be carried at the same level the american flag is always higher is a myth 
The American flag is carried at the same level unless you run into a situation like this. So when you run into that, the American flag then has to be minimally higher. Not just whatever, it's higher. It should be minimally higher. So uh, no slings mounted on the rifles. Slings are, are uh, mandatory. Why? Because they're pictured in the, in the pictures in the Afman. They're also, uh, if you're using the ceremonial technique, then they're also uh, pictured. If you're using the base honor guard manual, then it's, it's in the base honor guard manual. Uh, no flared hands in both of your left hands are too high. Good to see the left hand uh, pinned at the side there. And uh, if you're using ceremonial techniques, then, uh, and spacing is a little bit, well, it's inconsistent, but it's also a little too wide here. Um, but then again, if you, if left guard, if you were out a little more, then it would be more consistent and it probably wouldn't be that big of a deal. But, uh, but it is a bit wide. Uh, close interval is, is the usual. Unless you're going to split two and two with, uh, uh, well, for you, if I'm doing it your way, uh, the American flag and uh, the right rifle guard and then uh, the Air Force flag and the left rifle guard. So having them split because there's a monument or something like that in, in the center. And then this is most likely, uh, well, I don't know. Actually, I can't say most likely. If it's the, if it's the school flag, the unit's flag with that, that light blue, I guess it's light blue, uh, then, then oh, okay, if it's a unit flag. Wrong staffs again. And then most likely wrong finials also. So let's look at this team. I like this team. I think this team looks absolutely fantastic. Now this is a a dog hair, <clears throat> but this is a Civil Air Patrol team that is well schooled in ceremonial drill. Although guards, you could stand to pull the rifles back just a little bit more, uh, so that your thumb is along the seam of the trouser leg. And then uh, the backs of the hands need to face to the front. Now, um, the reason we do that is so that you can have your forearm pressing up against the staff and then pressing into the shoulder. Uh, they have their flags properly tucked. This is ceremonial drill, and uh, cadet ceremonial guardsmen can perform this. Proper staffs. There's the finials there that are, uh, that are told, talked about in the AFI. And then the, uh, now here, <clears throat> what we have, uh, they had so few, and I know the story behind this, they had so few cadets performing different ceremonial uh, duties that night that as soon as the, uh, uh, as soon as the colors were posted, the cadets marched off and practically had their, their uh, harness taken off of them as they were marching to go do another, I think it was the, uh, the POW table. So, uh, that's why the, the harnesses are on the outside of the, of the belt. So, you know, it, you do what you can. And I understand that. So, uh, the civil air patrol flag is there and that is the organizational flag. Now they could carry the departmental, which is the air force flag, but I'm glad they're, they're carrying that organizational flag and so here we have chrome domes and i'll just say it one more time these pictures are just random i, I pulled them up just to uh to go through them this could be you know several years ago uh, it was uh 2018 i think it was uh that that the air force policy came out banning the use of of helmets now so no more chrome domes for junior rotc for Air Force Junior ROTC. Army J ROTC can still use the helmets if they were purchased with local funds. And it, Army funds can't can't be used uh, for that. Now, uh, what what is interesting to me is that they're using the proper staffs. They have a slight angle forward. They're not matching. It's a little inconsistent there. Alignment's inconsistent as well. Um, gloves need to definitely be tucked. But... This is not a color guard, unless this is the second rank of a masked color guard. It, it, it could be. I, I don't know. So, uh, But the masked color guard has very specific rules. You don't have a, uh, you don't put state flags in the, in the second rank. You don't put 
just any random flag. They actually have to be unit flags in that second rank, which is why you don't see a lot of massed color guards. The Marine Corps order does an excellent job of outlining exactly the order and, and what flags go in the, the uh, subsequent uh, ranks and, and what order they, they fall in. So really, uh, really well done. But this is not a color guard because what's missing? The guards. The guards are missing. Now, this could be the American flag, um, but it looks like this is probably all of the service flags. I would hazard a guess that it's all the service flags. Um, but where's the American flag? And then where are the guards as well? So, and I don't know. It, it could be, actually, it could be that this is the American flag and these are the service flags minus the Coast Guard flag, which happens actually quite a lot, unfortunately. Um, so let's see, do I have that? Yes, I do. All right, a little bit bigger. Okay. So another our another senior ROTC. Come on guys with the with the flared left hands. What's going on with that? Spacing is inconsistent. Should be close interval here. Chin straps down. That's a good thing. Harnesses are not under the belt and uh, actually it looks like your Montana is that Montana? Uh, looks like the Montana flag is higher than, or being carried higher than the American. Wrong staffs. Um, that's that's not good. When when color bearers get their harnesses on, before you do anything else, you need to make sure that the harnesses are at the exact same height. And these harnesses, if they're web, no, they're not. They're they're uh, leather. So leather, white leather, that's not in the AFI. It's black leather. For J. Rossi and and uh, and Civil Air Patrol, uh, the white is authorized, but but ROTC has to follow the uh, the AFI and and the AFMAN, all that good stuff. White is not a an authorized color. Anyway, so you can punch different holes into the already pre pre punched holes there in the uh, the harness but but that's that's definitely not a not a good thing not at all and then it looks like also that there's a a, a really hard cranked wrist there and it also looks like uh, a dip on the right shoulder trying to i don't know interesting uh body posture there but you don't you don't crank the wrist let me see if i can move this down just a hair there we go okay so when you're at present remember that pinky is going to be there but you're not you're, you're going to have a fairly neutral there so you're going to have a fairly neutral wrist what you don't want is that extreme crank there that's to where you have that that huge angle and and especially a, a flared hand you, you're not going to flare the hand Got to gotta wrap that hand around. All right, another one that I blew up. There we go. Another base honor guard here. See, black. Black Clarino. And then for practice, it's either the black or blue web material. And uh, left hand's a bit too high, so it should be here. And then also there's a bend in the wrist. So that, that left pinky should be right down here. But they're they're doing a decent job. Look at that chin straps, not throat straps. That's a good uh, good job there. And we've got that. I blew that one up too. So here we have a Jay Rotsy. And okay, she's smiling. No big deal. Not a big deal at all. <clears throat> Mostly, yeah, probably going to present the colors for a, a Friday night football game. That's awesome. Except. Look at this. Aluminum staffs with the ball finial. Now, if you if you actually look in, I believe it's the AFI. Yeah, it's the AFI, uh, the, the protocol AFI. If you look in there, it specifically states that the ball finial is no longer authorized and that uh, uh, 
that that when they're replaced, they should you should have the uh, the the flat army spearhead. Uh, aluminum staffs aren't authorized in the Air Force, not for Civil Air Patrol, not for Junior ROTC, not for nobody. Holding the staff the staff like this is not an Air Force technique. That's actually an army technique. So you need to fully extend that arm and get that, that V grip there. Uh, but the wrong staffs and finials. And your American flag is smaller than your other two flags. Now, I do very much appreciate that you have the Air Force flag there. And uh, maybe, uh, and I'll have to ask my vexillologist friend, Devon Simper, what flag that might be. Uh, could be a school flag, which is fine. You know, school flags can be uh, unit flags, uh, so to speak. Uh, but then also here, this is not how we, this is not how we go to parade rest with the rifles. And I know that these are the uh, the the later uh, replica rifles, the wood rifles. But when we go to parade rest, the fingers are extended and joined, and they remain at the same position. When you're at, at when you're at attention and your hand is like this, it's at this level of the rifle. All you do is extend your arm forward for parade rest and leave it at the same position on the rifle. The, the, the hand doesn't move. It's for the army that the hand moves up and then the hand moves back. So a uh, couple of couple of issues here. And I don't remember what... Uh, oh, okay. So uh, whatever GCS... Indiana, it looks like, uh, one of the Indiana schools. Okay, and then we have this. Now, I don't know if they were just posing for the picture or if they actually meant this to be a color guard. This is, uh, it's close. I mean, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not horrible, but there's uh, a few things, the hand positions here. Uh, see, when... When you're on a color guard, when you're in uniform, I have this this uh, uh, paragraph that I wrote, and I'll, I'll see if I can't post it down below. When you put on a uniform, you're expected to know certain things. You have a certain level of responsibility. As soon as you pick up a rifle or you pick up a flag, you have much more responsibility that comes your way, and you're expected to know that. It doesn't matter whether you're active duty guard, reserve, junior ROTC, Sea Cadets, Civil Air Patrol, Young Marines, even the Boy Scouts, for, for goodness sakes, it, it, Girl Scouts, um, Pathfinders, uh, what else is out there? I've, there's, there's plenty of, of organizations out there that firefighters, police, EMS, as soon as you put on that, that uniform, people know, especially firefighters and, and police, EMS, we know exactly what you're supposed to know, which is everything. You're supposed to know everything. Police are supposed to be able to rattle off all the laws, plus protect, plus give me directions to wherever I'm supposed to be going when I'm lost. Firefighters are supposed to know everything about protection and, and fire. And uh, so you have that job knowledge, but then when you come to Color Guard, there's also the same expectation that you have so when you don't know it really shows all right last picture this is the air force honor guard at disneyland or disney world i'm not sure probably disney world all right so uh, the step height is just a hair off right uh, rifle guard is a little bit too high but now why why are they marked timing so hard so high Oh, California. All right, California flag. So that's uh, Disneyland. All right. So why on earth would they be mar uh, marching in place so high? Well, that's the ceremonial technique for, for marching in place. The uh, regulation drill technique is, what, four inches off the ground. Now, for the Army, it's two inches off the ground. Uh, but it says the foot comes off the ground. So... Are you supposed to have your foot completely flat and bring the whole foot up? That's unrealistic. So what you do is you let your foot hang naturally, and then the toe is actually what comes off the ground, 
four inches, the marching surface, four inches or two inches. The Marine Corps order goes into detail, and I really appreciate this detail. It says that when you bring the foot up, the toe is two inches, the heel is four inches off the deck, and that perfectly explains that really, really well. And you can see here a nice silk flag that is really expensive. All right, so thanks to Air Force Honor Guard and other and the the J Rotsies and uh, senior ROTC units that I that I used for uh, for this educational video. I I really hope that with my writing on the website and also the videos that I'm making, I'm really hoping that I'm communicating the importance uh, and the the necessity. Of, of knowing what your service standards are and that, yep, we have some, some problems with uh, a couple of the, the regulations, but that doesn't mean that we're supposed to just do whatever, whenever. And that goes for, for uh, our, our veterans as well, the veteran groups. I might just do uh, something with the, the veterans in mind. Uh, maybe. Uh, that depends. All right. So uh, anyway, that wraps up this video. I hope it's been uh, educational. It, it, I learn something each time I do something, you know, whether I'm teaching, whether I'm writing or doing these videos. I, I really appreciate them. So uh, send some comments below. Thank you.